What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Firewatch. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today, and the hills are smoking, and that's very, very bad for their lungs. Let's call it in. I see a really thin plume of smoke. Yeah, I see it too. A thin plume like this is either a new fire or a campfire. Campfire? You, you think it's them? I reckon so. It looks like it's to the southwest of me. That's right. If you hike towards Five Mile Creek, that should put you in the neighborhood. Keep an eye on that smoke plume. Let me know if it's getting any larger. Will do. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, when a forest fire kicks off, we kinda, the last place we wanna be is in the forest. I don't know, this whole thing seems like it could end really, really badly for us. In the previous episodes, all kinds of stuff had happened. She's got Alzheimer's. Like, um, dementia. Whoa. How old was she? Is she? She's alive. She's with her family in Melbourne, Australia. She's 43. Fuck. Yeah. What was it like when you guys found out? We were scared shitless. Eventually it was impossible to ignore, and we saw all the doctors and... All of that, they diagnosed her, and we were both just very scared. Can't really tell when Julia is scared. She just gets quiet. She was very quiet. Yeah, that's one of my biggest fears in life. I'd be okay with, like, dying of cancer or, like, getting run over by a car or anything like that. Like, it's, I don't want it to happen. Like, I don't crave it to happen. But if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Your car gets pulled when your car gets pulled. However... Flapjack off his ass and out to repair that wire. Excuse me, Flapjack? You know, like a loser, a chotch. I really don't, but I do now. Well, the next time you're at a bar and some banker steps on your foot so he can order his crappy martini, you've got just the name to use. Nope. Hey, Flapjack, why don't you wait your turn before I bounce your face off a dumpster? It's beautiful! Flapjack, but yeah, any mental disability, like where you lose your memory or forget who you are and shit. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could go through that one. It might be time to opt out. I don't think I'm brave enough. Up we go. And again, that's one of those diseases that I keep hoping they'll cure at some point. And yet it just never seems to get cured. Like, since I was a kid, people always talk about Alzheimer's and stuff like that. Lou Gehrig's disease. All those random debilitating where your brain, like, loses contact with, like, either itself and or parts of your body. This shit's terrifying, though, when you think about it. Wait, where's this fire at? Who's playing the MIDI? Somebody's playing the MIDI right now. Give me a soundtrack to my life. At least it doesn't sound like terrifying music, so we know something bad's not going to happen. Smoke's over there. I don't think that log's going to be real useful. We're going to have to hook around. Yeah. Why are our legs all red like that? Go back and rewind and look at our legs. Our legs are all pale and white, but they've got like a bright red part too. So we gotta go back this way. Our thin column of smoke. Let's see here. She wanted me to go to... I must have just come back from over there. That goes to Wapiti Meadow. You know, last time we saw them, they're up by Jonesy, so I'm wondering if the campfire isn't, like, right in that little area somewhere. I don't know. Oh, no, it is right there. Okay, so yeah, we came back the right way, sorry. So, how'd you meet? I met in a bar. Mm, the birthplace of modern romance.
Weirdly enough, I don't know a lot of people who have met in bars. Maybe like one or two. Most people I know met through like video gaming. Or they just like met in high school and just like settled then. They were like, nope. Clearly at the age of 18 years old, I will never do better than this. Uh, I'm folding. Let's get married. <laughs> oh, God. Although one day you wake up and you're like 30 and you're like the only one of your friends who isn't married. So there is a downside to the whole like waiting game and just being like, ah, I'm not so sure if this is a good idea. Do I just have like infinite rope now? I hope so. Last time I fell my ass down this cliff though, it'd be safer just to go down that way and then cross down. I don't know, that's what I would do though. I mean, if you can stay on your feet, you can surf shale. It doesn't really look like shale though. It's a little bit lumpy for shale. So with this shale flow right here, it would actually look a lot different if you have like an alluvial... Kind of like an alluvial hillside or whatever. Shale is very, very flat. It's flat, and it makes kind of like a ding, 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 like a metallic sound when you knock it on stuff. And it slides past itself very easily because it tends to lay in flat layers. And so you can surf it if you're, well, stupid or careful. <laughs> it depends what your definition is, I suppose. But either way, this is all way too lumpy to be shale over here. Yep. Might just be the perspective. Down we go. I think we should be getting pretty close. Should I take some evidence? Should I use the camera? Yeah, let's use the camera. We'll take some evidence. Yeah, there we go. They don't know us like that. They don't know us like that. We're like MacGyver out here. We're a detective. We keep it real. I don't know if I should go down that way and hook around. I don't think we might be able to go around this way, though. I don't know. It might work out. Let's go see if we can't get a better lookout spot. Can I climb up right there? No, it probably won't let me. Well, we might have found the right way over. I don't know. Looks like it's blocked right there. We're not able to go up that spot. This hooking around thing is not working out so successfully for me. I think I probably should have just repelled down. Should have been far more repellent. And then maybe I'd be accomplishing something right now. Underneath the log. Through a bunch of bushes. Getting poison oak. It is super itchy. <sighs> and I, How much you want to bet we didn't bring our tech new? How much you want to bet we ain't got our tech new with us? Every time I forget the tech new, I get poison oak. Story of my life. Lost in some bushes. You'll have to forgive me. Yeah. When the fire season wraps up, are you gonna go be with her? Just go back to Boulder. You should go be with her. Uh, maybe I'll go visit. I don't know. Well, why not? She's with her family in Melbourne. They're not big fans of mine. Oh. Her sister Susan is great, but her parents, I uh, think they always thought she could do better, and that I could have done a better job looking after her. Fuck that. I have no doubt you did your best. I don't know. If you want to go visit her, you should go. Don't let a couple of assholes keep you away from someone you love. I'll think about it. That's what I was looking for. I was trying to find the trailhead back. I'm going to run up this valley right here. If nothing else, the game is gorgeous. Viceroy or maybe a monarch butterfly. You can never tell. The only difference is a viceroy is pretending to be a monarch. Apparently monarchs, because they eat milkweed or something like that, they taste super terrible. And so the viceroy is adapted and evolved to look like the monarch because it gets eaten less when it looks like them because animals know that they're bitter and they don't taste good. And so even though it tastes wonderful, like deep fried chicken with buffalo sauce, animals never know. They're just like, ah, I'm a dumb animal. That looks like a monarch butterfly. I'm not going to eat it because it probably tastes bad. That was my impression of a dumbass animal that thinks a viceroy is a monarch butterfly. Huzzah! So supposedly, the storyline for this game was written by the guy that did the first season of The Walking Dead, I think? Or at least one of the like executive writers for the first season of The Walking Dead, so I assume that at some point... We'll run into zombies or something. No, I'm just messing around. I, I was actually serious, though. He was the executive, like, writer for, like, some major TV series. It was, like, super popular. I don't know if it was The Walking Dead or not. 
but he was involved with a really, really big series like Lost or Heroes or something like that. I don't know. Pretty sure it was Walking Dead. Where'd our smoke plume get off to? Also, what's happened to the color palette? Got real orange around here. I don't like this color. When I have nightmares, like in real life, no joke, when I have nightmares, it's always this color in my nightmares, and so I just don't, I don't like it. I have an entire lifetime of bad dreams that are all in this color palette right here. Missing person. How many hikers go missing in the Shoshone? More than none, unfortunately, with most of them being in this area. The thoroughfare, because it's so remote. Why? I found an old flyer for a missing hiker. It just got me thinking, that's all. Like how you said one day you were talking to the Goodwins, and then the next you weren't. Ned Goodwin didn't get mauled by a bear or stuck in a ravine. He was just a ptsd a-hole who dragged his son out to do a job and realized it was a bad idea. PTSD? That doesn't sound good. Yeah, I don't know. He was in the army. He was off. It's actually the saddest story. He was only discharged because his mother, Brian's grandmother, died. She'd been taking care of him, and Ned was the only next of kin. Damn. And you got to know Brian a little bit? Yeah. I talked to him way more than I talked to Ned, that's for sure. How was he at, uh, you know, spotting fires? <laughs> Better than you. He actually liked to stay in the tower. Boy, for as dry as it is this summer, there's an area down here that's, uh, lush. Oh, you must be talking about the Aspen Grove down there. Yeah, I think that's where I am. Those trees are actually one root organism. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah, they share their water as a colony that can live for hundreds of years, even through fire. Can you believe you're actually getting paid to learn all of these amazing things? Also, uh, by what it looks like on this map, you'll be coming up on a stream that should lead you towards where we saw that smoke. Indeed, I am streaming right now. I don't know how many viewers I have, but I am streaming. Make me e famous. Internet monies. That was probably one of my favorite guild names I ever saw in an MMO. The guild name was YouTube Monies, and it just made me laugh. Made me laugh. I know a lot of people like that, and so it was applicable. Getting them YouTube guaps. They definitely did a good job of making the game pretty. I'll give them that. It's a really nice waterfall down here. Given those girls love a skinny dipping, I bet they're nearby. Uh, there's some cloth out here. It looks like it was torn from something. Strange. I'll keep looking around. Yeah, at first I thought it might be a trail marker. I know people that t bring ribbons with them everywhere into how ah, we found a beer can. About one of their empties. Guess we're on the right track. Roger that. Red Eagle. Yeah, at first I thought it might be a trail marker. I got guys that when you map out in the wilderness, you bring ribbon with you and you tie it off on trees so that you can mark locations where you've seen like stone formations come out of the ground because sometimes you can walk for a pretty good amount of time without seeing any stone now obviously we don't have that problem here but if you have especially lush areas like for example if you're trying to map in Marin County it's very hilly there's not a lot of rock outcrops it's just a bunch of grass and sort of meadows and things like that and so when you find yourself one of these rock outcrops you put down a stake and then you tie it off with a ribbon and then you move to the next spot and you draw laser lines in between them on the map in order to map the movement of it when it dives underneath the ground I have entered the teen zone. Oh, really? And where's that? It's the name of a magazine for girls. It's on the ground here at their camp. You found them? Where are they? No idea. The thing is, their entire campsite is wrecked. What happened? I don't know, maybe they had a fight or something. It's that bad? It's not good. You've got that camera, right? It might be a good idea to get a few snaps, just in case. Yeah, good thinking. Evidence. Snap. Are 
Yeah, and don't touch anything neither. There's a note. Huh. Let's investigate everything else first, but I want to see what that note says. These girls have a full case of beer left here. A full case. Well, they're impressive little shits, I guess. That is some dedication. Ah, found my sheets! So they did break into your tower. Looks like... Well, I found some dangerous hunks. What on earth are you... It's another one of those magazines. I'll take care of their fire. That would be great, as always. Let's see what this note says. Their tent looks like it's been through the shredder, which would explain that scrap I found. What could have done that? Like a, like a bear or, um... I don't know, it sounds crazy, but even a bull elk if it's off its rocker. Whatever did it, did not hold back. They got moosetized. You know, maybe I should take one of their sleeping bags as payback. At this stage, take whatever you want. You really shouldn't. It might be a crime scene. I wouldn't touch shit. Not me. I ain't going down for some shit I didn't do. I'm hella paranoid. Uh, looks like someone left a note. Intriguing. Maybe you should read it. Okay, yeah. Let me know what it says. Dear Psycho, I hope you're fucking happy. We're leaving and we're gonna find the police or whatever and tell them how you creeped on us in the lake, then came and destroyed our campsite and all of our stuff. Oh, and stealing panties is gross out. You're probably a mental fucking axe murderer and are so going to jail. I hope it was worth being a jerk over fireworks, you dick. That's the kind of shit that could ruin somebody's life, though. God damn. Young girls can be so petty, dude. Gnarly. Oh, they're gone, for sure. Well, what's it say? Threatening to call the police because they think I attacked them. Oh my god, well, <laughs> did you? No, well, hey, I didn't do this, okay? Someone or something went to town here, but it wasn't me. Because I told you to scare them, not assault them. I didn't. Of course I didn't. I just threw their stereo in the lake. Yeah, I really wish you wouldn't have done that. This is, I don't know, weird as hell, but it wasn't me. It's, it's okay. I believe you. Weird stuff happens in the woods. It could be other campers. They could be having a bad mushroom trip. We really don't know, but they're gone. There's no way to call the cops. They're not coming back, and we can get to work. I'd really like to start enjoying a quiet summer. Yeah, me too. Oh, that's the end. Okay, so they gave me a press build. We'll pick up here. We'll pick up right here with the next episode. I get the full game, like, tomorrow or the next day. It'll be fine. I just don't have it right now. My name is Splattercat. This is Firewatch. We'll be back tomorrow with the continuation of the storyline, all right? Bye.